I've had multiple people send me a video about an author who did a print pre-order of her books using Ingram Spark. And because Ingram Spark and Amazon don't necessarily play nice, this author had a number of books returned to Ingram Spark. And now she's up $600. And I've seen TikToks that range from good information, reasonable advice, swinging wildly to Ingram Spark is the devil. You shouldn't use them. You shouldn't do a pre-order. Um, this is their fault. This is KDP's fault. Um, there are a range of videos out there and I did do a reel, um, connecting to one of them. Um, but to talk about it, because you guys know, I do very often recommend using a pre-order and for print books, I do recommend using, um, Ingram spark for your print pre-order and then using KDP for your Kindle ebook pre-order. And then when you're print books go live, I recommend using KDP for Amazon because you make more money for your print book but still keeping Ingram Spark for your bookstores and your libraries. So let's talk about this idea because what happened to this author in particular is she put her book up on Ingram Spark for pre-order and she, for the print pre-order. And so she put it up on Ingram Spark. She put it, I assume, I don't know this for sure, but based on some of the, the things that people are saying in these videos, it sounds like she put it up at a full trade discount of 55%. And she also put it, on a um on returns return and i think return destroy so i'll talk about all of these terms in just a minute so she put it on return destroy and she did that because that is what bookstores and retail stores typically like now when this book went up for pre-order ingram spark does what it's supposed to do it sent that listing once approved they sent it out to barnesandnoble.com for pre-order, bookshop.org for pre-order. It's up on Ingram, so bookstores and libraries could order it for pre-order. And they also sent the book to Amazon for pre-order. This is what they're supposed to do. This is what your contract states. This is their job. And they did it. They sent the book over to Amazon for pre-order. Now, this author was fantastic at marketing. As her book's coming out, she had a several hundred pre-orders, I believe. Now, of those pre-orders, a lot were Kindle, but there were a good chunk of print books as well. So what happens? Amazon, seeing these print pre-orders and not seeing this book in their system for sale, goes, ooh, this book is popular. We better order copies or pre-order copies from Ingram so that when the book comes out, we have stock in our warehouse and we can sell them. So they order I don't know how many is. Let's say it's 100 copies. They under they order 100 copies for pre-order. So on the day this book launches, Ingram ships Amazon 100 copies of the book and Amazon starts to fulfill orders. Now, meanwhile, the author is using KDP as well. So they have their book up on KDP, same book, same ISBN, just as I recommend. And what happened is when that KDP version went live, Amazon will always prioritize their own product and their own sales. So what Amazon did is that when KDP, the print book went live, they started selling the KDP version and the Ingram Spark copies, the Ingram copies just sat on the shelf. And then after a period of time, after a launch, it's typically going to be a couple months. What Amazon did was, huh, these copies haven't sold. We need to return them. So then they return them to Ingram Spark. I believe the number that I heard was 82 copies. So let's say they ordered 100 and then 82 got returned because they're fulfilling from KDP. And because the author has return set, what happens is that she then got stuck with essentially having to pay back the royalties of those books. And it was about $600 from what I've heard. And so people are now saying because of Amazon and Ingram Spark, this author is out $600. And I do not, <laughs> I actually saw one video that said it's not the author's fault. Um, neither Ingram Spark or KDP listed on their website that this could happen. I don't think it's the author's fault. I'm not blaming the author. She did probably advice she had heard. She she did what she thought was best. I'm not blaming the author. However, I will say that the author acting as a self-publisher is responsible for the business and the business mistakes. 
And that sucks. I'm not trying to say it doesn't. It sucks and it's unfortunate, but it's a lesson learned. Ingram Spark is not at fault. And honestly, even Amazon's not at fault. Does it stink? Do you wish it didn't happen? Absolutely. But it's not Ingram Spark's responsibility to tell you that Amazon may buy extra stock and they may return them. It's not their responsibility. When you set a book for returnable on Ingram Spark, they do have several pop ups that you have to click, that you have to recognize. And I'm going to read them. <laughs> Um, right here, I'm going to read them so that it pulls up exactly what it says and what this author and every author that uses Ingram Spark agrees to. I understand that applying a discount, um, I'm not that one, I'm sorry. I understand that selecting the yes deliver return option means that copies of the title can be returned to Ingram and Ingram will ship the return copies to me. My account will be charged the current wholesale cost of each returned copy plus shipping and handling fees, which is currently $3 per book for U.S. returns to a U.S. address and $20 per book for U.S. returns to a non-U.S. address. The condition of return copies is not guaranteed. Um, I understand that selecting no return option for a market means retailers cannot return copies of my book to Ingram. This status can limit the likelihood that bookstores will purchase your title, which can limit the title's retailer reach. I accept all prices above and understand that this currency conversion reflects the pricing entered today, but will not automatically update in line with extra exchange rate, blah, blah, blah. So if you set a book to return, you are acknowledging these terms. And when you are setting returns on Ingram Spark, there are three options. No, I'm not taking returns, which means you don't take returns. That's fine. It'll get you up on barnesandnoble.com and get it, get you up on Amazon for pre-order. Um, what it will not do is if you have no returns, in most cases, retail stores and bookstores are not going to be interested in your book. Um, many of them require returnability. So you need to know that. The other two return options are yes, deliver, which is what I just read. And this is where those copies are required that the, the, um, the bookstore has to return those copies and those copies do get shipped directly to you, the person who holds the Ingram Spark account, they get shipped to you. And that means the wholesale cost. So the cost of what the bookstore paid plus $3 per book is what you get charged. So if the wholesale cost of a book is $5, so that's going to be um, wholesale cost is what the bookstore paid. If you have a full trade discount, that's going to be about a 40% discount. So let's just say that the wholesale cost was $5 per book. Then you are paying $5 plus the $3 shipping per book, which means to get those books back, you're going to pay $8 per title. And the condition is not guaranteed. They have to be saleable, which we've talked about. Could mean they're a little dog-eared. It could mean they're a little worn looking but they have to be saleable. Um, so then if that's a hundred copies, you guys know I'm not good at math, but if that's a hundred copies and um, they're being returned at $8 per copy, that's going to add up very quickly. It's gonna be $800. So that is how that happens. Now, the other return option is return destroy. And I'm going to read these out as well, directly from Ingram Spark. And again, if you choose this option, you have to check a big, it won't let you pass this screen without acknowledging this. I understand that selecting yes, destroy return option means copies of the title can be returned to Ingram and I will not receive a physical copy in return. My account will be charged the current wholesale cost of each copy returned, but no shipping and handling fees will apply. Ingram will destroy any returned copies received. This means typically what bookstores do is they tear off the front cover. We've talked about this. We've all seen the pictures on social media of like piles of books with their covers ripped off. This is returned books. So they destroy them by ripping off the cover. They ship that into Ingram as proof of destroying. And then they, the bookstore gets the refund. And what's charged if the wholesale cost is $5 per book and there's a hundred books, then obviously this is going to be a lower price than if you're returning because it's going to be $300 less, it would be $500. 500 in returns, um, that 
then you're responsible for paying back to them. But then you don't have copies of the book. So depending on if you have space for them, if you are reselling at different farmers markets or fairs or different things, it kind of depends on how you would set your returns. But this is required. It does not, you know, it's pretty clear. And then once you select this, your print pricing options that are right on Ingram Spark, it specifies even more information on your pricing area. So why do I read over all of these terms? I'm doing this to say, not blaming the author. I'm not, because you don't know what you don't know and you don't even think of these possibilities until you hear about them or you're in this situation. So I'm not blaming the author, but I am saying that neither is it Ingram Spark's fault that the author as the publisher on Ingram Spark agreed to these terms. And while it really stinks that Amazon and Ingram Spark have this little kind of <laughs> feud, I guess, going on to where, you know, authors can get caught in the middle, indie authors in particular, and that is terrible and it stinks. However, Ingram Spark didn't do anything wrong. Accepting returns is not wrong. You agreed to the terms. Um, and it's for a long period of time. I believe that they can do returns for up to six months after the book was purchased. Um, you have to fact check me on that one. But so it does stink. And it stinks that in this case, and this is not the only time it's happened where a book has a print pre-order, a lot of orders were printed, and then the KDP version went live. Should authors know that this could happen? Yes, they should know. I mean, I think, but that's not on necessarily the responsibility of either KDP or Ingram Spark. This is the responsibility of author education, of us as a community being educated and sharing and sharing insights, which is why I've taken the time to go over this here because I think it's really important. It's, um, as I said, I think in my, my Instagram post, it's a little bit of um, don't hate the player, hate the game. And that's what this is. This is just all part of publishing. And it was a very expensive lesson for this one author, a painful lesson, I'm sure. And I absolutely feel for them. And I hope that they're able to sell and recoup those losses. But I think that it's important that we learn from it rather than pointing fingers or saying never do a pre-order. I think that's silly. So what would I do in this situation? If you are doing a print pre-order for your book and you know you're not going to be pitching bookstores, you're not hoping for book signings or events right when the book launches. I personally, if I was setting my book on pre-order, so it would go print pre-order to Amazon and I wasn't planning on reaching out to retail stores, I would recommend that on the back end of Ingram Spark when you're setting the book up, I'd set the book at a 40% discount instead of a 55% discount. This means that you're making higher royalties. In fact, it's pretty darn close to what you would make from an Amazon sale, because that was the other thing, is that you earn less per copy sold on Amazon com uh, compared to Ingram Spark. And some of these videos were saying it was because Ingram Spark is greedy, which is completely wrong. The difference is that Amazon is the retailer. So Amazon's 40-60 split, authors do get higher ro royalties because Amazon is both um, they're the distribution and they are the store. They're earning their income all in one. Whereas on Ingram Spark, the discount you sent is passed on to bookstores and libraries. Ingram and Ingram Spark don't keep all of that. Ingram Spark gets paid to print. Ingram uh, Wholesale typically keeps 15%, which is not that much for what they do. And then the rest goes to the bookstore or the library, who then has to make libraries. Again, they're not resale for profit, but bookstores are, and they have to make a living as well. So this is not, you don't get a lower royalty because Ingram Spark is greedy. That's just silly. You get a lower royalty because of the process of publishing and how sales work. So if you're doing a pre-order and you would like higher royalties, and you don't want this possibility of returns, the way that you do it is that you set your book up for print pre-order on Ingram Spark so it pushes out to Amazon. But instead of a 55% discount to appeal to retail stores, you do a 40% discount, which will get you online. It'll get you on barnesnoble.com, bookshop.org, and on Amazon. You will be earning close to the royalty you would earn on Amazon for print sales. And then you set your book as non-returnable. Simply set it as non-returnable. Keep in mind that the terms apply to the um, purchaser when they purchase. So if your book is set as non-returnable, 
when Amazon purchases it, even if you change that later, Amazon can't return it. It's based on when they purchased. So you set your book as non-returnable. No, this is not going to appeal to bookstores or retail stores. If you're trying to set up book signings and events, this will not work. But if you're not doing that, if you're focused online and Amazon, it works. Then what you do, you set your book for pre-order on Ingram Spark, 40% non-returnable. Then if Amazon has extra copies, they have to sell them before, I mean, they might sell them before the KDP version goes live, but you're not out the money. Meanwhile, when the book launches and goes live, you can make your KDP version go live and that's what will show up on Amazon. Now, in some cases, what may happen is if Amazon said, oh, we need 100 copies, they uh, pre-order was 80 copies. Well, then what happens is because Amazon can't return those copies and they want to sell them, they will probably prioritize selling those 20 copies in the warehouse before you see those KDP sales. So that may happen but you are not stuck with $600 in returns. So that is one of the things that um, I really, really would just consider doing. And again, it's unfortunate, but it's not, it's not really anyone's fault. It's a very painful lesson. And I feel so sorry for this author, but I hope that we can all as community educate and learn from it so that you don't end up in that same situation.